Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome. Thanks for logging on today. If you love this watch, reach out to me, tmosso at thewatchbox.com. That email is in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmosso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Jacques Etro is an interesting company. Historically founded by automaton genius, watch and clock maker Jacques Hedro and discontinued after the premature death of Dro and his sons. It was revived in the 20th century as a white label manufacturer and in fact very few companies during the mid 20th century made more watches for later rebranding than Jacques Hedro. The name was purchased by the Swatch Group and revived in 2001 as part of their elite tier of watch brands alongside uh, the likes of Blancpain and Breguet. This watch that you see here is really emblematic of everything that Jacques Hedro does right today. It's luxurious, it's rare, it's complicated, and it's artistically exquisite. 43 millimeters in rose gold, this is the Jacques Hedro Astral Contiem Perpetuel Eclipse. So 43 in diameter, 13.4 millimeters thick, 51 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. It's got a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. This is a watch that wears fairly well on my wrist in spite of the large size. You can see that the lugs are sharply downturned, which makes for a better fit. I believe you could wear this watch on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist like mine, but no smaller. So 16 centimeters circumference and up, you're good to go. That's probably the definitive shot, maybe that one. It feels good, I think it looks good, and it is low enough to fit underneath most sleeves, but you just want to have 16 centimeters or larger for this particular ride. The strap is Large rectangular scale alligator leather in matte black. It's what's called a bonded strap. So you see how there's no stitching. Adhesive is used to fix the calf skin on the bottom to the alligator leather on the top. And that creates a lovely undisturbed aesthetic. You can also see that it's a brand new strap with no crimping or gouging. We've got a matching Jacques Hedro rose gold pin buckle and it sort of matches the flow of the lug profiles. Taking a look, we do have lugs that are actually somewhat concave and that's an easy element to miss if you're just looking at these watches like this online. The case flank is fairly impressive in its sculpting and you can see it's got a little bit of a Grubel forcey like inward inflection to those lugs. They have an inward inflection and then internal mirror polishing. It's subtle and quite beautiful. We've got a Jacques Hedro double star branded crown, many little individual push adjusters for the calendar complications. The lugs are thin when viewed end on, but when viewed in profile, you can see they come to a sort of tear dropped tuck. And then we have a domed bezel, a fairly flat, but noticeably cambered sapphire. You can see it's got a little bit of a, a a camber atop a box section, a very minimal box section profile, but it is the dial that really sets it apart. It is ivory grand faux enamel. So on a solid gold dial base, vitreous or glass-based paint is applied, and it's applied, it's fired, it's applied, it's fired, it's polished. All this happens through about 20 firings at 800 to 900 degrees centigrade, and during the process, the dial can crack, can explode. Enamel has a famously high rejection rate, which is why historically it's been rare and expensive, but the advantages are that it is essentially an eternal material. It will not tarnish, oxidize, fade. It's immune to the effects of moisture. It has an ageless beauty to it. And being a craft art, it has an exquisite rarity. Now we have a perpetual calendar with a little eclipse style moon. You can see a paddle covers up a traditional engraved rose gold man in the moon style phase. We have applied rose gold stars on this dial which has that eggshell ivory base color. We have a retrograding day. We have a retrograding date. We have a radial indication of the month and then leap year in the little aperture there. We have lovely modified alpha style hands in rose gold. And if you look carefully, you can see that the dial has that very subtle sandpaper-like texture that's characteristic of real fired enamel. On the back, we have a movement borrowed from fellow high-end Swatch Group brand, Blancpain. Beginning life as the Frédéric Piguet 1150 here, we have the 58 
LR4, which is a twin barrel, 68 power reserve, or 68 hour power reserve. The reason that it's 68 instead of the 1150s 100 is that in this application, the beat rate is raised to eight beats per second from six to make it a potentially more accurate timekeeper. Now it is adjusted in a chronometer standard five positions, which is considered high horology. We have a lovely sunray motif on the rotor, which features satin, beveling on the edge, and then the sunray motif with the Jacques Hedro double star logo. The bridges here have a lovely Cote de Genève or striping. You can see on their edges, they've got lovely mirrored beveling as well. Uh, as with these movements in Blancpain watches, the beveling is particularly impressive for a watch in series production. And Jacques Hedro making less than 3,000 pieces a year, there won't be a lot of all variants combined, uh, much less complex individual artisanal references like this one. You can also see that there is satination on the wheels, including solarization on the barrel itself. Screw heads are black polished. You can see just how impressive that beveling is for a series production watch. And then there's engine turning or perlage on the base plate with a combination of polish and satination on the regulator assembly and solarization at the center of the ball bearing. This is a movement that includes a measure of hand and mechanical finishing but the element that is hand finished is extremely convincing and arguably superior from what you'd get on say a Jorn, a Moser, or an AP. All of this 30 meters water resistant and it is a perpetual calendar, which means once you've set this retrograde perpetual, in theory, if it keeps running, it doesn't have to be corrected until the year 2100. So reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.